Hello guys and um, welcome to one of my videos and um, I've not done one of these types of videos for quite some time now um, mainly this year because after the UK um, come out of lockdown I've mainly been focusing um, my time and efforts on trying to get better at racing basically um, but I've got something a little bit different here so I thought I would do um, a video do apologize this video is probably going to turn out fairly long but it's one of those types of videos that has to be quite long to to really cover the, the main points and um, what I'll be covering in this video so I'll start off with a brief and um, first look at this frame then I'll switch to um, being on my um, flying field um, up in Hutton's Cranswick where we do all our uh, um, racing practice and events I'll show you the track do a quick track walk I'll then go into some DVR footage of me flying this frame and then I'll finish it off with um, a summary um, of how um, I found this frame so first off then I'll go into the frame itself so this frame is called the Talon V2 and it's from a New Zealand company called Care Area the people that have been in the hobby for, for a while will know this brand um, but it's not been around for as long as, as some of the some of the other brands um, in this in this hobby. It's been around, I'd say, for around two years now. Um, they mainly deal in the, the premium bracket of of, uh, of FPV racing drones and motors. Um, but that being said, this frame um, isn't too expensive, um, not compared to the to the original, the, the V1 Talon anyway. It comes in at around, I think it's $58, which is very um, comparable to your lightweight race frames, which are around the same price. Um, it is a 5 inch um, race frame, injection moulded plastic, unibody um, design with a pod as well. So it only has um, two parts to it this frame and the pod is held in place um, by two standoffs. There's a standoff here at the front which is obviously just inside the pod and then there's a standoff that goes across the back here and then that is held in by four screws two on either side so you've got two that side and two on that side um, in terms of the build itself um it's it's not it it is it's not that hard to build um the only reason why it would be hard to build is purely on your component choice and um, so this frame it is a 20 by 20 as well as being a 30 by 30 mounting and um, for your for your flight stack and um, i'd highly recommend you go 20 by 20 because if you go 30 by 30 you'll have trouble and um, getting it in there you will you will be able to get it in there but depending on the size of it because some 30 by 30 is that's just a mounting pattern like the, the actual size of the board exceeds those dimensions so if, it, if you have got a fairly large um, 30 by 30 stack you won't be able to mount it so if you're a bit OCD like me like I like to mount everything or do everything the, the proper way if possible and um, which is obviously have the the battery pads coming out the rear of the frame and um, if the uh, battery pads uh, exceeding that 30 by 30 dimension you're gonna have to um, orientate your your um, foreign one ESC so the battery pads are coming out the side so if, if you so if you do run 30 by 30 stacks or you have a do you do have a spare 30 by 30 stack and you can't afford to get new components you just want to shove some more components on this frame and um, that's the way you'll have to you'll have to mount it another thing to note with this frame as well um, so the motor mounts here are six millimeter so your usual screws obviously for your four inch arms what you use on your carbon frames um, they will not reach your actual motor itself so you will need to get some larger screws these screws here that i have are nine millimeter but they still they, they don't protrude the actual mot motor mount itself on the, on the motor and um, so i could probably could easily get away with 10 millimeter here so i'd say nine millimeter minimum 10 millimeter for the extra bit of um thread through your motor so you've got less chance of it ripping a motor off in in a, in a crash if you if you do have cheesy motors anyway with these motors it's not too bad because they're quite decent quality but yeah um that is so sorry i forgot to mention as well the weight so this is a heavy frame for a race frame 
it is coming in at so with the pod the standoff screws um the unibody and not this lipo strap but it comes with its own um care area lipo strap i've seen on other videos of people weighing it comes in around 115 grams so comparing that to your flat carbon lightweight racers they're coming in around the 60 gram mark so there's quite a substantial increase in weight there however this is um designed with aerodynamics in mind so the extra weight hopefully won't hinder the the, the uh, how this how this drone flies basically you shouldn't really be able to feel it as much as you would if that weight was on a on a flat carbon frame so that brings me um on to my actual component choice i'm trying to keep it light as possible um, so I've got these heads up motors by Fly 533. They're a 2207 motor, 1946 kV, I think. So a 6S motor. They're really, really light. They're like one of the lightest motors you can buy right now in its class um, at around 29 grams. So that's one weight saving there. Then moving on to the props. Of course, I'm sponsored by Azure. So I do use their props. The ones I've got on the drone at the moment are the newest version, which is the Vanover um, race prop. Um, but in the video later on, you might see different colour props. That's probably because I've because I like to switch between these, the uh, Johnny FPV uh, versions, and the HQ heads up uh, blue props as well. So if you see different props in the video it's just just because i like to try different things and see what see what's working on the, on a specific track and um, moving from there so if you see here uh, there's a, there's a slight recess there in the arm so you can put your you can um put your motor wires in that recess then a bit of electrical tape over the top and that'll stop so when your props bend in crashes it'll stop your props from cutting your motor wires which is which is quite nice extra bit of protection there and then inside the pod, which you can't see, is a Acorn 20 by 20 stack, as I've said before. And it is 35 amp. Then from there, it's going up to the Acorn F4 flight controller. Then from there, I have a TBS Unify Nano. Just that's the original one, it's not the Pro 32. Um, the antenna I'm using is the Luminaire Axi, which is tucked away again in the pod, so again, nice and protected. Then my camera is the Runcam Racer, I think it's a 2 or a 3, it's, it's one of those two, um, I can't quite remember. And then for my radio link, I have, of course, uh, the TBS Crossfire Nano, there's the Immortal T there on the back. Basically, all of the parts I've got on this drone are exactly the same parts as what I use on my Atto FPV sniper build. So, so I, I can literally port all my settings from that from those drones onto this one, which I have done. I'm currently using Betaflight 4.2. I've got it flying really nice on my other drones, so I'm hoping it'll transfer onto this drone, and this drone will hope, hopefully too fly um, pretty nice. So. For the final part of this section of the video, I'm going to go on to the pros and cons, and I'll quickly cover the cons first. So obviously the first con, people and myself are going to um, bring up, is the weight. Because obviously racers, we like our drones to be as light as possible because it helps things like efficiency, less breakages because you aren't carrying as much weight, and um, so the impacts aren't as, as harsh. However, um, if it is aerodynamic, that weight shouldn't affect the, the drone as much as it would with a flat carbon frame that's not aerodynamic, as obviously an aerodynamic frame is cutting through the air as opposed to a flat carbon frame which is susceptible to drag, which is trying to push its way through the air. So, yeah, hopefully the aerodynamics will, will help cancel out that extra weight. The other con is, it is a unibody frame, so if you do break it, you're going to need a whole new unibody as opposed to a carbon frame where a lot of us just use single arms, so if you break an arm, you can just swap it out for a new one. 
they aren't selling the unibody by itself yet um but i reckon in time they will start selling um the the actual unibody as a as a separate as a separate part as opposed to now where you have to buy the full the full the full thing also another con it is plastic like the oblivion which was known to crack really really easy i know this uh, first time as well because i actually bought one of them and it was probably one of the worst frames i ever bought total waste of money but you've you've got to try things and rather than say things are going to be like this or like that you actually need to try them and, and confirm your your worries or your good points about something basically uh, yeah so yeah it's it's plastic it is susceptible to, to cracking especially so now it's it's summer and it's for plastic that's that's it's not too bad basically um, in the winter that can really affect plastic you'll know um, with your props if it's cold they if you at least you can just clip something and you, your prop will snap off for it like really easy as opposed to to flying in in the warmer in the warmer time of the year it'll be exactly the same for the for this frame i've i reckon unless um does anybody that flies this frame in in a, in a colder climate can can let me know how um how they're getting on with it and if it is still durable when it's colder but then my final con i'd say is the build it's it's like i said it's not a hard build but um you need to make sure you get the right components because if you don't get the right components because it's so tight um you're going to obviously be looking forward to building it you're gonna have all your stuff ready on your bench and then you're gonna try and install them and it's not it's just not gonna fit and it's gonna it's gonna um, annoy you and um, so yeah make sure you, you buy and um, the correct parts mainly a 20 by 20 uh, flight stack and then obviously try and keep your receivers as small as possible as well because that'll help um, keep everything housed inside your pod so now I'll move on to the pros. So the first pro I'd say is the durability. So if it is durable, um, this is going to be a great frame for if just for practicing, or if you're new um, to flying and you're new to to racing. Also, one of the main problems with drones is repairs. Buy buying buying parts and then repairing your drones because gets frustrating sometimes because you all you do all you want to do is fly <coughs> and obviously the more time in the air the better better you're going to get and the, the quicker um you're going to get better at flying because you the less time you spend on the bench um it's going to be better for you overall so i think a frame like this that is supposed to be durable is going to benefit your flying especially uh, the newer pilots i want to get into racing the next um pro i'd say is the actual the pod so this pod here provides so much protection because obviously you've got all your um, important bits inside it. So usually on your carbon frames, all this the sides and, and stuff are open. So when you crash, things can get in there, especially if you crash into other pilots or other, other parts crash into you. Their props go in there, spin around inside, chop your motor wires and stuff, can cause shorts, and then that obviously lets you out the game. So this is stopping that from happening. Literally the only thing you can break is a frame itself and motors and props now lastly the third and final pro i'd say is the aero like i've covered um a bit previously like i said if it is aerodynamic it's going to benefit this uh, this drone um, quite a bit and and your flying i'd say because i have flown a bespoke um designed aero frame before and it literally i've not flown anything close to it since no matter how light smaller the, um, the drone's footprint, like the flat carbon frame's uh, footprint, is in the air. It still doesn't fly anywhere near something that's designed to be aerodynamic. And like I said before as well, the aero will help um, negate that extra weight this um, carries over your conventional or your more popular um, flat carbon frames. So yeah, that concludes this part of the video. Now by the magic of video, I'm going to switch to the flying field. Hi there guys, so I'm here at my flying field and I'll quickly just go through the track with you. So if you see where Lee is over there, that's obviously where we're going to launch from. Then we're going to come um, towards the camera, then there's going to be uh, 
that's the start finish gate there. We're going to follow it all the way around. We're going to go around this flag, through that gate, round that flag there. We're going to come through this gate here. It's going to be a corkscrew through. Focus, focus. And then we're going to come. Cap, you can't really see it, but there's a gravity gate there. We're going to come up through the gravity gate, back down through it, and then there is a gate um, there that we're going to split S. Come through there, back through this gate here, up through the two hoops, split S the second hoop, come back through it, then through that gate there. Um, that is another um, like hairpin type split S corner. Then split S that get um, there. And there's a little flag there, slight chicane. Round to the right and then through this uh, square gate here and then back through the start finish. Yep, so that's the track walk guys. Um, I'll just switch to some DVR now. I'll, I'll switch um, between different parts of the session as well. Um, so I'll start, the first few will be at the start, and then around the, around the middle, and then towards the end. So, I promise, nearly there. Thank you for um, sticking with this video so far. Um, I've literally um, I just got back from from my flying session. I just got back home, um, so I just thought I'd conclude the video with a bit of a, a bit of a summary of how I found this um, this, this frame today into in today's session. So I'll get straight into it then. Um, my thoughts after flying it is um, 
it is a really really good frame i did i kind of slagged it a bit when it was first announced on the on the groups on facebook and stuff like that um but after flying it i'm gonna have to agree and say that it is um a very very nice flying frame i've really enjoyed flying it must have put a good i'd say 30 at least 30 packs through it today and from the first pack to the last pack i've just been able to fly it really really well um it feels locked, it feels agile, it feels precise. The, the extra weight, you can't feel it whatsoever. It doesn't feel like it's like it's a heavier than the usual um, frame. And yeah, like I said, it's really, really fun to fly. I've literally just wanted to put pack and pack and pack after pack after pack through it. Um, I've not even thought about um, flying my my sniper frames that's how much i've been enjoying flying this frame and to fly to be flying it how i've flown it today it's literally the best i've ever flown today being fast and consistent um, and to do that with a with a brand new frame is is a testament to to how well this this frame actually flies so i will definitely be Flying, it, flying it some more. I'm looking forward to flying it again, and I think I'm going to give it a give it a try at the next um, Hull FPV event, which is next Sunday as well. See how I get on. I can't really do any worse than what what I'm doing at the minute at event, so I might as well give give this a try. Um, there's only I'd say a couple of bad points I found after flying it today. So durability, no issues whatsoever with the durability. I wasn't expecting it to be uh, to have any issues with the durability, to be honest. Um, the, one of the, the first things I found is the cam mount here so for a start the screws that run cam provide aren't big enough or, or sorry aren't long enough to go through the plastic and then into the into the camera literally they're holding on by a thread so with it being a hard mount um, style for, for the camera which is another it's another bad thing I, I think anyway because um, then what happens is say like when your props get bent or whatever and you get some some micro vibrations the the screw just unscrews itself just like it does with motor mounts and stuff unscrews itself and then the camera um loses its um angle what you've what you previously set it at which is obviously not good when you're racing another sorry um back on that as well so it would be good to see um some tpu um designed like fixed mounts to uh, help dampen the vibrations and also to keep your, your camera locked at a, at a desired angle. I will usually like to, to fly um, at 45 degrees and I do know one of the sponsored pilots, um, Rob Saxon, he is working on um, a TPU mount for the for the camera. Um, second thing I found with this frame is how it flies off when we're on like beat up props it flies, you get like some weird twitching and stuff with it uh, and I, I'm going to put that down to just it upsetting the, the, the balance in the area of the frame, causing it to, to act weird in the air. Um, but other than that, there's not any <laughs> there's not any other bad points about the frame. It's, it's actually a really, really nice flying frame, and I'd urge anyone who was like umming and ahhing on, on the fence about this frame, just, just go and buy it and give it a try. I can pretty much 100% guarantee you, you're going to enjoy flying this frame. It's just a really really fun for him to fly and really easy as well it's so precise like when i first started flying it i kind of had to get used to the oversteer because it, it does proper grip in the corners um but yeah once you get used to it you can really start opening up and bringing those lap times down i was really consistent today as well i was putting in the max amount of laps for quite a lot of quite a lot of my rounds um so yeah really good for him um Glad I have I have give it give it a go. It's definitely worth worth the um, worth the effort. Um, so if you have enjoyed this video, um, and or if you want to um, ask any questions, find out a bit more about it, and um, feel free to message me or post your your questions in the comments, and I'll happily answer every single question that you have, or at least try my best to anyway. But yeah, thanks again. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I shall see you in the next one. Peace.